Hi everybody, how you doing? Um, Saturday morning, it is quarter past ten. Um, doesn't feel like there's any deviation between the weekdays and the weekend days. Um, my kids are out playing football in the garden um, as we approach day one of homeschooling, as I know a lot of you are, uh, and thinking about ways and means of trying to keep them occupied whilst I can try in some way, shape or form continue doing bits of work. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to everybody who got in touch. Um, so if you are joining me for the first time, I'm going to try and do this every day just for kind of, I mean, not for any length of time, but maybe about 15 minutes maximum. It might get longer as we go on, as we kind of open the discussion a bit more. But uh, I mean, mainly for my sanity to have a way of uh, talking about things and getting things off my chest and recommending things to you. Uh, it's not really going to be a kind of place to come and have a moan about things. I want it to be a really positive environment where we can share things together. We can talk about things we've been watching, we've been listening to, maybe even reading as well. Um, this morning, I put a message up on Twitter asking if people, um, I get such a nice response whenever I was lucky enough to record um, CBB's Bedtime Stories. And uh, I think I recorded maybe like half a dozen in one go. And so I get such a nice response because they get repeated uh, when they go out. So I read my kids' bedtime stories every night. So I thought we could almost kill two birds with one stone and I could stick them up so you guys can you can use them anytime if I put them up on the right platform so I thought I might just try and spread it out a bit and I might do that one on Facebook so then you've got the opportunity to play it to your kids and it can give you 15 minutes to go and have a cup of tea or just put your feet up while someone else reads them a story so I'll get around to that um but I thought I would start by saying we've got a brand new episode of the podcast up for you guys um Ben and I who work on the podcast together as much as we can to keep that a weekly thing to give you the opportunity to just listen to great people talking about something they love um, and also give you the opportunity I guess within that to be recommended films and soundtracks that you could listen to so this week's episode is with Jed Curzo he's the brother of Justin Curzo and they've worked together on I think pretty much all of Justin's films definitely Macbeth and Snowtown and um Assassin's Creed uh, and most recently True Story of the Kelly Gang which has the fantastic George Mackay in it. Now I know that this was something that was on in cinemas recently uh, and I don't know what the story is with regards to how quickly they're going to get it on um, streaming and on demand services. I'll keep you posted on that but in the meantime um, have a listen to Jed on this week's soundtracking and uh, he's wonderful, really really interesting. He also worked on non-brother related films as well so he worked on um uh can um, not contagion god i've got that on the brain at the minute and um, he worked on slow west the fantastic film by john mclean uh, which is definitely one of my favorite films of the past 10 years it's a great kind of western with um ben, i think i mentioned this yesterday actually ben mendelson and michael fassbender and um, it's uh it's really 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 good he also did the score for the babadook amongst others. So check out this week's soundtrack in with Jed Curzo. Um, I just wanted to um, get around to some of your comments and stuff that you've been making on previous episodes of this as well. Um, sorry about getting the names of people's you know online statuses wrong. It's not just a case of them putting their name and we make up um, loads of stuff. Uh, hi to Caroline Stewart. Thank you so much for your positivity. Richard Wilkes as well says he's looking forward to this being something he can escape with as well. Glenn Sweeney. Uh, thank you very much for your mentions as well. He says, um, there are lots of music artists posting live short two or three minute song set series, such as In My Room, Rolling Stone's new Instagram music store, uh, series. They have new artists who come on three times a week to play from wherever they are around the world. The series joins others with similar likes, uh, titles like um, At Home Together and Shut In and Sing. Artists like Willie Nelson, John Legend, Death Cafe Cutie, Ben Gibbard and others. So that's a really, really, really good idea of making sure there's a platform for new artists to get their music heard because at the minute there's, you know, they can't gig, they can't make money. Uh, Techno Cryptic, hello to you too. Uh, and then who else have we got? Um, what we are trying to do as well is reach out to people to either come yeah. and do the podcast or come and um, do some live streaming with us as well, obviously remotely. So we'd have kind of multi screens going on. So We've got quite a few people who are interested in that. Neil Laurie, how are you doing, Matt Owen as well? 
who uh, says, I think you should push people to see Monos every day. I mentioned this film yesterday, which is brilliant. Also, Ryan Gosling's Lost River is currently on Prime Video. Criminally underrated, exceptional cast, and for me, not talked about enough. I loved Lost River. Um, it was Ryan Gosling's directorial debut, and he had a bit of a hard time with it, I know, but Matt Smith uh, takes the lead in this film, and I think he's extraordinary in it. So there's a suggestion or a recommendation for you as well. Um, so on to some new stuff that I wanted to talk about today. Um, we as a family last night watched Thor Ragnarok again. Um, it's a great uh, sort of standalone film, but also part of the whole Marvel series, directed by Taika Waititi, who definitely, I think, almost kind of, you know, the Marvel series was doing brilliant up to this point, but I think with, with Thor Ragnarok, he definitely injected his own specific sense of humour in there, which I adore. And I think it shifted the tone of Marvel in a way and kind of stopped them from taking themselves a bit too seriously, which could have been something that happened. So if I know a lot of you as well are taking this time to um, explore your film um, history and credentials and the idea that you can maybe take a director and dive into their back catalogue and you know start from the start. Taika Waititi would be a great starting point for you if you want to go and explore a director's um, you know repertoire. Thor Ragnarok, obviously brilliant. Jojo Rabbit, if you've listened to me or been a part of anything that I've done over the past couple of months, you'll know that I... Oh, hold on a minute. So I've got some... I adore Jojo Rabbit. I got... There we go. We love Jojo Rabbit. It's a brilliant film. Uh, and you guys can watch it now. So if you haven't seen it, watch it. Also, in terms of, like, with your kids, it's slightly... It's slightly sensitive, but I watched it with my 11-year-old and it was amazing how much it um, actually encouraged conversation and questions about that whole you know world war ii the holocaust all that kind of thing and um, so it's a really good one uh, and hunt for the world of people i adore i think is absolutely brilliant and if you go back beyond that you've got um what we do in the shadows you've got boy he was also part of the whole he was directed some of the episodes of flight of the concords so dive into tyker's back catalogue and start from the beginning and work your way right up because he's got a, a brilliant tonal approach to his things lots of messages coming in from people as well um also um there are loads of people setting up movie clubs and things so um i was gonna robbie collin who i i'm a big fan of and he's a friend and he does great things in the world of film he did a thing last week where he was um doing a live uh, kind of viewing party with la la land via the telegraph so if you follow robbie at all he's robbie reviews on twitter um, I'm sure he'll be doing some more of these as well. And then yesterday, I was so gutted I was too late to it. I'm just trying to find the details. Um, Carol Morley, who is an amazing female director, um, she uh, did a kind of, you know, that kind of, I guess, viewing party type thing again. Uh, and she did it um, last night with The Bigamist, which is a 1953 film, uh, Ida Lupino. And I'm gutted that I missed it and didn't know about it at the time, but this is something, if you're not already following her, then make sure you're following Carol Morley on um, Twitter. Uh, Out of Blue was her last film, which was just, oh my God, it was so good. Um, so if you wanna get involved in having that thing of where you're watching a film at the same time as people, then you can get involved in that. She's another one to follow, which is great. So there's Carol and Robbie, two cup kind of, very different movie club type things as well for you guys to check out. Um, in terms of stuff that's just on TV, um, tonight at, on nine o'clock, so today being Saturday, so nine o'clock tonight on Channel 4, um, Asif Kapadia's brilliant documentary about Maradona is on. Um, I was lucky enough to speak to Asif, so if you're a fan, then do check out our episode with him on Soundtrack, and I'll stick it up on socials for you guys to listen to. He's fascinating. He's a brilliant, brilliant documentary filmmaker. Um, most of you will have seen Amy. If you haven't already, you need to rectify that immediately. Um, so go and check out that. I'm about to fall off my chair. Sorry. Um, uh, but Maradona, I'm talking really fast. I mean, it's like I'm in a rush. I'm not in a rush. I've got nowhere to go. So Asif Kapadia's Maradona is on tonight on Channel 4. So go and check it out. It's really, really good. And either before or after, you can listen to... Um, uh, soundtracking. He has got this amazing, um, I'm going to try and find out what the name of the track is. Um, George, Georgie, I, I can't even say his name. Um, 
uh oh man it's not it's the it's the um there's a great track at the beginning of the film anyway um and i'm trying to find out which one it is hold on i might have it here no it's not that one i'll find it and let you know as well um it's brilliant you should check it out nine o'clock tonight channel four sorry i lost my way slightly and then my friend carlin um sent me a, a link this morning to oh my god so many messages from these guys um sent me this great thing this morning if you are into documentaries because there are so many great stories being told by people out there so here we go the IDFA, the world's largest documentary film festival, is giving viewers access to over 300 films released between 1988 and 2019 on its website, free of charge. So um, if you go to uh, IF, IDFA, uh, then you can access a, a whole host of brilliant documentaries that I'm sure there's like 302 titles. Uh, notable European movies include festival hits such as Johan Ujam and Mona Eldes Rafia. Um, there's so many great things. So head to the IDFA, the world's largest documentary film gathering. Uh, 302 titles have been made available for you guys to check out. So off you go and, and explore. Um, I think that's enough for today, don't you? That's been about 15 minutes worth almost. Um, but be safe, look after each other, leave your comments below, get subscribing, we'll try and do this every day, um, and, oh, that's nice, my friend Elise has just sent a child-friendly explanation of coronavirus, um, but leave your comments below, let me know what you would like me to try and include in this, um, if there's any guests you'd like me to try and get on the podcast, um, then let me know. Just to let you know, some people that have said yes that we're going to try and do over the next couple of weeks. Um, Warren Ellis, uh, we're going to speak to on Monday, hopefully via Skype and record that. Um, Isabel Wallerbridge has said yes as well. Um, Alexander Desplat um, emailed me back and he's like, what will we talk about? I'm like, are you serious? You've got so many films you've done the soundtrack for. Um, most notably, most recently, Little Women. Um, so Alexandra Desplat said yes, Riz Ahmed we're trying to hook up with as well, um, Stephen Pride as well we're trying to hook up with, there's loads of people, so it'd be great to know who you would like us to try and, and get, so leave your comments and, and get involved, and yeah, and we'll speak to you hopefully same time, same place tomorrow, but as I said, get to this whenever you can, there's no rush, um, and take care of each other, stay safe, and sending love to you all, take care. Bye.